Be clear, Daly. Thanks, Ken Corlin. Um, Minister, I welcome the fact that we're taking 300 uh, refugees. I'm sorry that it isn't more. I hope and that the Minister and the Government will be proactively uh, considering and arguing that we should take more when the EU moves to deal with these tens of thousands of people who are presently incarcerated in holding centres, particularly in Greece and in Italy. But I think the real issue really is, is what conditions will those people be in when they come to Ireland? Are we going to treat them as citizens with respect and dignity? Or are they going to be thrown in to direct provision centres with uh, other people who've desperately sought asylum here? And you see, I think we've looked at this debate the wrong way around because this isn't about charity. It isn't about us being nice or anything like that. Refugees don't want sympathy or, you know, tears or whatever. They want us to stop facilitating the reasons that make them refugees in the first place. And unless we address these issues, we're going to be faced with this crisis for years to come. And a report published at the end of April by the International Consortium of in Investigative Journalists reveals that the World Bank displaced a staggering 3.4 million people in the last five years by funding privatisations, land grabs, dams, by backing companies and governments accused of rape, murder and torture, by putting $50 billion into projects that have the, been graded the highest risk for irreversible and unprecedented social impacts. The World Bank has contributed to the flow of people across the globe. And I think if we're serious about stopping and assisting people, the first thing we could do would start dealing with the World Bank and the IMF and other such similar institutions. The second thing we could do is stop backing and being complicit with NATO and US imperialism in bombing the Middle East, most particularly Libya and Syria and so on, which has caused and generated the beginnings of ISIS. This is a key reason why we have the flood of, of refugees and immigrants desperately seeking a future in Europe, because the US and NATO have destroyed their countries, their families, their livelihoods. So it's not about charity or us being nice. It's about us making amends, I suppose, in some ways for activities that we're complicit in by allowing Shannon Airport be used. Deputies, uh, Mick Wallace and Claire Daly again. Hundreds of thousands are trying to get across the Mediterranean, not because they're chasing uh, wonderful welfare benefits in Europe, but because their lives have been destroyed in the countries where they've come from. And uh, sadly, uh, we don't seem to have a problem with the fact that uh, the US used Shannon as a military base to actually uh, cause severe destruction in places like uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, and Syria. We haven't, we've, been, we've refused to call Israel to account in Palestine. And it's interesting to see that of the refugees, in the world today, 5 million are, are Palestinian, 4 million Syrians plus, Afghans 2.9, Iraqis 1.8. Uh, there's serious issues at stake. Uh, obviously, those who have the goal make the rules, and uh, Europe and the US, even though the riches might be even unequally divided, uh, they, they are rich in, in no small part because other places are poor and the developed world has uh, much to answer for in that area. But on, on, on the issue of Ireland's decision to take in approximately 300 refugees, that has to be welcomed as a small start. And thirdly, uh, I realise there's a UN, an EU foreign minister's meeting on Monday to consider a proposal to launch uh, some military missions on Libya to attack the boats that could be carrying uh, potential migrants across the sea. Minister, I would urge you that our minister, when he goes to Europe on Monday, that he would advocate that this would be sheer lunacy. Most of these people are fishermen. The boats are, are, are involved in fishing. They get bought up overnight to, to carry immigrants the next day at a high price. And uh, the idea of bombing them is crazy. We should never have agreed to the bombing of Libya in the first place. The NATO has destroyed the place. And the idea of another military uh, adventure into Libya uh, it just doesn't make any sense, you, and I would advocate that the Irish government refuse to sign up to such an idea. Um, I think we have to stand back and look at the horrendous circumstances that forces individuals and families to make the treacherous journey 
in order to try and seek a better life in Europe. And it, it really doesn't bear thinking about. People give their life savings, they entrust their children essentially to pirates and put them on a ship that they know there's a good chance will, won't make it to the other side. I mean, it is just beyond belief. But and so in that context, I'm very glad that the government is resettling people. I really am. I'm sorry it isn't more, and I hope it's more out of the next batch. But the key issue here really isn't about uh, resettling refugees. It should be about stopping them being made refugees in the first place. And the reason why they're being driven from their own countries, where they share their own family, their own language, do you think they really want to come here? It's because they're being left with no future where they should be living, surrounded by the people and the life circumstances that they know best. And that's because of economic pillage or because of military devastation. And I just want to echo the points that we are complicit in that by allowing Shannon in part of that process. And there's no doubt in my mind that the uh, uh, US military that have transited through Shannon and engaged in the likes of activities in Libya and in Syria are partly responsible for the reason why so many people now are ending up in this devastating uh, situation.